Menstruation is a naturally occurring blood that exits the woman's vagina in a healthy manner without being due to childbirth. Take that definition and pay special attention to it. In this definition, there is a signal to the three types of vaginal bleeding that a woman encounters. A woman may experience three types of vaginal bleeding, menstrual bleeding, postpartum bleeding, and what is going to be called here in this document, defective bleeding. It's the how Sometimes it's called sickness bleeding. So what is menstruation? It is a naturally occurring blood that exits the woman's vagina in a healthy manner without being due to childbirth. Once we said it, it exits the vagina in a healthy manner, that excluded defective bleeding. And once we said it's not due to childbirth, that excluded postpartum bleeding. Then menstruation is a naturally occurring blood that exits the woman's vagina in a healthy manner without being due to childbirth. The earliest age at which a woman would experience menstruation is approximately nine years old. So we already read the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. هَذَا شَيْءٌ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى بَنَاتِ آدَمِ This is something that Allah has ordained for the daughters of Adam. What appears from this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that menstruation is something um, that used to happen to even the direct daughters of Adam. The first women who are born as um, daughters from the loins of Adam himself alayhi salatu was salam according to that it is incorrect that menstruation started with the children of Israel the women of the children of Israel that's incorrect what do the children of Israel have to do with menstruation that because of some of the sins that the women of the children of Israel used to commit Allah inflicted them with very heavy menstrual bleeding. But they're not the first women to menstruate. And in this hadith, the Prophet said, this is something that Allah ordained for the daughters of Adam. Then how about his wife? Because she's not his daughter. So did she used to menstruate too? Allah knows. So menstruation is a naturally occurring blood that exits the woman's vagina in a healthy manner without being due to childbirth. The earliest age at which a woman would experience menstruation is approximately nine lunar years. Now remember, brothers and sisters, whenever we say months or years, we always mean, in a religious context, lunar months and lunar years. So it's not a condition for me to repeat this, to say lunar months or lunar years. It's enough for me to say months or years if I have to. So always remember that because, of course, we're talking about menstruation. Then the word month is going to recur. We're always talking about lunar months and lunar years. So the earliest age at which a woman would experience menstruation is approximately nine years old. Why approximately? Because she could actually experience menstruation a short time before becoming nine years old. Hence, if blood exits her vagina before attaining nine years, by a time period that does not accommodate a cycle of menstruation and a cycle of purity, that is, she sees the blood before attaining nine years of age by less than 16 days, then it is menstruation or else it is defective bleeding. What does that mean? As you know, and we're going to come to mention, inshallah, 
the minimum of menstruation, according to the Shafiri school, is a day and a night, 24 hours. The minimum of purity between two menstrual cycles, between two menstrual periods, the minimum of purity between two menstrual periods is 15 days. So, brothers and sisters, what is the minimum time needed for a complete menstruation and a complete time of purity? 16 days. 16 days. The minimum needed for a complete menstrual cycle and the complete purity period is 16 days. Because the minimum of menstruation is 24 hours. The minimum of purity is 15 days. 24 hours equals one day. So the minimum of menstruation is one day. The minimum of purity is 15 days. So add that together, the minimum time needed for a menstruation and a purity is 16 days. Is that much clearer so far? What's the minimum time needed to accommodate menstruation and purity? 16 days. If a girl sees vaginal bleeding, Less than 16 days before she turns 9. Less than. If she sees a vaginal bleeding. Less than 16 days before she turns 9. Then this is menstruation. So then, we say that the minimum age at which a girl could menstruate is approximately nine lunar years old. Approximately means she could menstruate a short time before becoming nine. By how much then? What's a short time before becoming nine? If a woman, a girl, saw vaginal bleeding Less than 16 days before she becomes 9, like 15 days before she becomes 9, for example, then this is menstruation. So, if she saw vaginal bleeding before becoming 9, at a time that cannot accommodate, cannot fit menstrual blood and purity, then it is menstruation. Or else it's not menstruation. Or else it's defective bleeding. So if she saw vaginal bleeding 16 days before turning 9, or 17, or 18, or 20 days, or a month, or two months, or six months before she turned 9, then this is not menstrual blood. Is that clear? Any question about that? The shades of menstrual blood. The colors of menstrual blood are five. Black, red, pink, yellow, and murky. You should know, though, that all of these colors should have a tint of redness. All of these five colors should have a tint of redness. So what's meant by eswed black is the dark red that leans towards blackness. Yani the dark red that because of its strength it leans towards blackness. And not the pure black. If a woman saw purely black fluid come from her vagina, this is not menstruation. The menstruation is blood. So it can be dark like it's headed towards being black, but really it's red in reality. And what's meant by eshqar, 
is the bright or brilliant red meaning the pink. And what's meant by ekdar murky, M-U-R-K-Y, is that which its color is close to soil. The bleeding, that its color is close to soil. Or another way to imagine it or think about it or talk about it is that it's that blood which resembles the blood that runs from the meat when you wash the meat. You know how you have meat and then you rinse the meat off and then some blood runs from that meat? Blood that is settled into the meat, it runs out of it when you rinse it. The murky blood resembles that. So it's like the color of soil or like the color of the blood that runs from the meat when you wash the meat. Yeah, sometimes we learn that it's brown or brownish. I just refrain from using the word brown and I'm I'm translating it in a way that's more literal. So the Arabic word is akdar. Akdar. Min al kudra. Kudra is like murkiness. Say for example you took some some dirt and you put it in water and squished it around. Now the water became murky. Furthermore, the blood that has black streaks is judged as black. And likewise, what has red streaks is judged, is judged as red, and so on. We said there's five colors of blood. Black, red, pink, yellow, and murky. Whatever has black streaks in it is judged as black. Meaning, if a woman had red blood except that there's some black lines in it, then the judgment of this blood is that it's black. If a woman had pink blood, except that it has red lines in it, then the judgment of this blood is that it's red. Or if a woman had yellow blood, except that it had pink streaks in it, then the judgment of this blood is that it's pink, etc. And being a streak is not a condition. It could even be a dot. So if a woman had bleeding, red blood, and in that red blood, there's a black dot, a dot of black blood, which we said that black blood means dark red blood. So in that red blood, there's a dot of black blood. Then all of that blood has the judgment of being black, yellowish and murky color those last two out of the five. The weighty opinion in the Shafiri school is that the yellowish and murky colors that appear during the days that are possibly and validly menstruation are considered menstruation. So if a woman sees any of that during the 15 days after the beginning of her menstruation, she considers it menstruation because these belong to the colors of menstruation. If a woman sees any of those colors inside of the days that are valid to be menstruation, whether it's at the beginning or it's at the end, then she considers it menstruation. So the weighty opinion is that the yellowish and murky colors that appear during the days that are possibly and validly menstruation are considered menstruation. So if a woman sees any of that during the 15 days after the beginning of her menstruation, any of those 15 days, whether it's the beginning or the end, she considers it menstruation because these belong to the colors of menstruation. Some Shafi'i scholars said that if she sees any of that after the days of her menstrual habit, then she does not consider it menstruation. Hence, if her menstrual habit lasts seven days, for example, after which she sees a yellowish or murky fluid, then she does not consider it menstruation. 
So, let's say, for example, a woman, her own personal norm, because every woman has her own normal menstrual cycle. Her own personal norm is to menstruate for five days. According to the second saying, if she reached her five days, that's her norm, and then she saw yellow or murky, she can consider that it's not menstruation. After she reached her norm, her normal menstrual cycle. But that's not the stronger saying in the Shafi'i school. The strong saying is that the yellow and the murky are menstrual colors. There's another saying that's outweighed in the Shafi'i school, and it's permissible to apply this saying, that the yellow or the murky that the woman sees after her normal menstrual cycle is over she doesn't consider it menstruation. It's not considered menstruation. The author, may Allah have mercy upon her, said, The minimum duration of menstruation, its maximum and its average. So that's a title. The minimum duration of menstruation is a day and a night, i.e. 24 hours. Hence, if a woman sees blood, even if she was pregnant, at a time which is valid to be menstruation, then she judges it as menstruation. So, a woman saw bleeding, even if she's pregnant. So what do we say about the vaginal bleeding of the pregnant woman? It can't be postpartum bleeding because she didn't deliver yet. So that leaves two possibilities. Either it's sickness bleeding or it's menstrual bleeding. Some scholars said it's sickness bleeding because she's pregnant now. She doesn't menstruate. And others said, no, it's menstruation because the pregnant woman can menstruate. So anyway, we're just going to say that the pregnant woman can menstruate. It's valid that the pregnant woman menstruates. So, the minimum duration of menstruation is a day and a night, i.e. 24 hours. Hence, if a woman sees blood, even if she was pregnant, at a time which is valid to be menstruation, that statement is important. At a time in which it's valid to be menstruation. Because, let's say for example, a woman, she menstruated for 15 days and then it stopped. And then after 5 days, she saw more blood. Then she's going to say, this is not menstruation because it's not at a time that's valid to be menstruation. I need to have 15 days of purity. The minimum of purity is 15 days. How did this blood just come back only after 5 days of purity? That means this is for sure not menstruation because it didn't fall at a time that's valid to be menstruation. So, if a woman sees blood, vaginal blood, even if she's pregnant, because the pregnant woman could menstruate, at a time which is valid to be menstruation, then she judges it as menstruation. So as long as that bleeding fell at a time that's valid to be menstruation, then she calls it menstruation. Uh, so she judges it as menstruation even if it didn't reach 24 hours. So it's not a condition for the woman to wait for 24 hours to deem the blood that she saw as menstrual blood. If she saw bleeding in days that are valid to be menstruation, then she deals with it as menstruation. She assumes that it's menstruation even before it reaches 24 hours. She does not wait for 24 hours to say this is menstruation. As soon as she sees that vaginal bleeding, and those are days that are valid for menstruation, then she deems it as menstruation. And she refrains from whatever a menstruating woman refrains from, even if that bleeding did not reach 24 hours yet. If the blood stops before 24 hours, then she does not need to take a ghusl. Because it did not reach the minimum of menstruation. Rather, she performs wudu and she prays. That's it. Same thing for that woman if she saw the yellow. 
If she saw yellow, and she's in days that are valid to be menstruation, she'll consider it menstruation. That's it. Don't be confused. Now, if it stops before 24 hours, then she just cleans herself and she prays. Moreover, if the blood exits again, then she considers it menstruation and she leaves out praying. So she saw bleeding. What does she do? She stops praying. She does not do anything a menstruating woman is not allowed to do. If it stopped before 24 hours, she does not need to make a ghusl. All she has to do is make a sinja and make wudu and pray. If that bleeding comes back, then she deals with it like menstruation. If that recurring blood on and off reaches 24 hours of bleeding inside of 15 days, then that's menstruation. So the author said, moreover, if the blood exits again, she considers it menstruation and leaves out praying. If the blood adds up to 24 hours, even by adding it to the previous bleedings, and then it stops, she performs the ghusl. Here's a question that some might ask. What if she knows that her bleeding is going to come back? What if it's her habit always that she bleeds for a day or two when it starts and then it stops and then it comes back? Is she allowed to take by this norm and not pray while in anticipating the, the return of the blood? Is that permissible for her to do? It's not. The answer is that it's not. That woman is not allowed to use her, her normal situation, which is that, for example, she knows her case that when her menstruation starts, it goes for two days, and then it stops for two days, and then it comes back, for example. It's not permissible for her to rely on her norm that her bleeding will come back, and then just keep refraining from prayer and fasting. The average menstruation is six or seven days. The maximum is 15 days. Therefore, the blood that exits during the 15 days would be considered menstruation. Meaning, without any consideration of her normal menstruation. Without any consideration of her normal menstruation. The blood that exits during those 15 days is menstruation, even if her own norm is to menstruate for three days. If she went up to 10 days or 12 days or 15 days or 7 days, it doesn't matter because she's still inside of the 15 days. The cessation of blood, meaning the stopping of the blood, can be known by the woman if she inserts a piece of cotton inside her vagina and it comes out white, such as a Q-tip, for example. Or by the secretion of a white discharge, which is called Qassatun Bayda. al qassatul Bayda. The woman can know that her menstruation ended by inserting something like a cotton, such as a Q-tip, and withdrawing it without any sign of menstruation, without any trace of blood. Or by the secretion of a white discharge. Another way she can know that her menstruation ended is by the secretion of a white discharge. It's called al qassatul bayda From this you can know then, brothers and sisters, that it's not a condition for the blood of menstruation to reach the outside of the vagina. As long as the woman has blood inside of her vagina, this is considered that she's still menstruating. So if she didn't see any blood get to the outside, yet she could insert a cotton into her vagina and find trace of blood, it means she's menstruating. Is that clear? Postpartum bleeding. 
The postpartum bleeding is the blood that exits after the womb is emptied from the fetus. Even if it were a blood clot or a bite-sized piece of meat that the midwives judge as the origin of a human, not the wet nurses, the midwives. The wet nurse is the breastfeeding lady. The midwives are the women who help the other women deliver babies. So if a woman um, delivered something, if deliver is the right word, if she delivered something um, that's a blood clot or a piece of meat, and the midwives say about this thing that came out, this is the origin of a human being. And then blood came out of her vagina. After that, this blood is postpartum bleeding. So the blood that exits with the child or during contractions before the child is born is not considered postpartum bleeding, nor is it menstruation. Rather, it is defective bleeding, so she keeps praying during that bleeding. The minimum of postpartum bleeding is a moment. The maximum is 60 days, and the average is 40 days. The minimum purity that separates two menstrual cycles is 15 days. The average is 23 or 24 days, and there's no maximum.